Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist here in the Seattle area. I just wanna say thank you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you to Seattle Met Magazine for the nice award. I got 2022 top doctor. Thank you for this nice plaque. I've gotten, I believe three years in a row. So thank you, let's keep it going. And thank you to my patients for being amazing. And many of you are here watching me on this channel. And today's topic will be on monkeypox. We'll be talking about some misunderstandings around this medical condition or we even say viral illness. We've gone through COVID, this pandemic, and now you're like, what next? What else is gonna hit us now? It's been a crazy time, but that's life. And right now we're dealing with this new orthopox virus causing monkeypox outbreaks across the US. The US is unfortunately is leading in cases as of May. So in the last three months, we've gotten over 17,000 confirmed cases according to CDC data in the US alone. I remember the first day we had that suspected case of monkeypox in Seattle. I remember that day because because I saw a patient who had blistering rash on the face and didn't feel well, had the generalized symptoms, the prodromal symptoms of feeling unwell, malaise, uh, sore throat and such. And I thought about it. Dermatologists across the country are definitely on guard thinking about monkeypox. And that's something I have not seen in my training. I trained at Harvard Medical School and we see a lot of the rare cases there. But fortunately, we didn't have smallpox to deal with or monkeypox at our hospital or in the US at the time. And so now we're gonna be exposed to this new viral illness that is new in my eyes. I've seen multiple TikToks on it, which is interesting that doctors are learning so much from TikTok because the patients are now posting their stories on TikTok showing the rash. The evolution of the monkeypox rash is quite interesting, starting with just red little blisters on the face or the palms and then spreading more diffusely. Traditionally, this orthopox virus will cause a prodromal phase, meaning before the rash happens, you start feeling unwell well, the malaise, the sore throat, and body aches. But recently with this new outbreak, we're seeing the rash coming up immediately first. And it can be an incubation of up to two to even three weeks after initial exposure. And now exposure wise, people are calling it a sexually transmitted disease. It's a disease only something you can get if you're in the MSM population, which is totally untrue. Anyone can get monkeypox. And if you do get it, please remove any stigma around this condition because we should never stigmatize anyone for having any kind of medical condition or viral illness, including COVID, monkeypox, whatever. Now, this is not traditionally a sexually transmitted infection, like say chlamydia or gonorrhea, but we are seeing it being transferred during sexual activity and it's skin to skin contact. The blisters are filled with fluid that is in full of virus, okay? The virus lies in the fluid. And so if you were to scratch the lesion, open up the blister, that fluid, if it gets onto your skin, you could potentially get monkeypox. If you have broken skin, compromised skin, eczema, and you touch the fluid, you're you're more readily to get bunky pox. The other risk factor is close rubbing. So frictional rubbing also, not just a quick little fist bump, but it has to be close rubbing. And so people are actually worried about spreading it during concerts when you're rubbing up against someone. There was a report of someone getting it at a concert in a very dense area and potentially got it there. There are reports that potentially just touching an infected surface could cause you to have monkey pox, but it's difficult to prove that right now, those cases. So, and what can we do? We'll talk about that towards the end of the video, but the rash is quite interesting now. So syphilis is like the big mimicker in dermatology, right? So syphilis can look like eczema, psoriasis. It can look like cutaneous T cell lymphoma. It can look like hand, foot, mouth disease. It can have an ulcer that looks like an aphthous ulcer or a herpes sore on the genitalia. Now monkeypox has a lot of different looks to it. When I look at the photos, the videos of people posting about their rash, it goes through different changes and it can even look like a vasculitis towards the end. But initially it can look like hand, foot, mouth disease where you get these little red bumps and blisters on your palms and then also in your mouth, on your face. Some people might just have one or two blisters on their face or in the anal genital region, especially if it's transferred during sexual activity. There's a whole wide range of presentations now, but if you do get it on the palms and soles, it can definitely look like hand foot mouth disease because it does commonly affect inside of the mouth. Specifically, I've seen people with painful sores on the side of their tongue. Now, when it happens on the face, it's really scary because it can cause atrophic scarring. I've seen pox, smallpox, pox viruses in general can cause these pox-like scars where you have this atrophic dimple or depression in the skin. And people with these large discrete volcanoes of monkeypox in their face, when they heal, they can really erupt and cause a depression in your collagen, leaving you with an atrophic scar, which is gonna be horrific. We don't know who that will happen to. Will it happen to everyone? No, but will it happen to these um, you know, 17,000 affected? Potentially. And so I'm gonna be having to see more of these scarring in 
my patients and having to figure out ways to treat it. You know, will it be peels? Will it be excising the scars? Will it be lasers, filler? You name it. So we're gonna have to be finding out ways to help with atrophic scarring on the face. Now, treatment for monkeypox, there's no treatment out there. You just have to kind of supportive care, making sure you're staying hydrated. Also, if you've been exposed, there are two available vaccinations that are becoming more readily available to the general population if you've been exposed. There's the ACAM 2000 and the Genio. The Genio is the non-replicating live vaccine and the replicating ACAM 2000. That one you want to avoid in, say, my patients with really bad atopic dermatitis or eczema because you can get this eczema vaccinatum where you can get the vaccine, the live vaccine, replicate within your eczema and cause a terrible rash, smallpox rash, you know? So these are smallpox vaccinations we're talking about. Now, if you've been vaccinated against the shingles, the herpes zoster virus, this is a completely different virus to monkeypox. And so there's no cross reactivity or cross immunization between the two. And so if you've had chicken pox, shingles, it does not give you any immunity against monkeypox. Totally different viruses. They're both viruses, but herpes simplex virus causes cold sores, herpes zoster or varicella, those cause chicken pox and shingles. And then the orthopox virus that causes monkeypox is totally different. And then also, as you guys know, you don't have to be traveling to Africa to be getting monkeypox, okay? All of us are potentially at risk of getting it. So what can we do? Keeping your hands clean, proper hand washing techniques, making sure you carry your hand sanitizer on you. If you wanna go traveling and wipe down your seat, your tray table, please don't feel bad doing that because we're all doing it, okay? We're all thinking about wiping stuff down the surfaces and such because we all have realized how dirty airplanes are, the airports can be. And so, you know, wearing your mask, this is not an airborne disease, but potentially swapping bodily fluids, saliva that can also be carrying monkeypox. I would say probably avoid sharing drinks right now for sure. And also and not engaging in sexual activity with anyone with potential symptoms. They're not feeling well. You know, if they're having the prodromal symptoms of feeling unwell, the malaise, the body aches, the sore throat. The other thing that we see with monkeypox more than say chicken pox would be lymph node swelling, okay? So lymph nodes becoming very swollen in the neck. That you don't see so much in chicken pox. In you're infectious or contagious up until the two weeks, two to three weeks of this illness until your lesions scab up and the scabs fall off. Once the scabs fall off, you're no longer contagious. This can be quite a long process. Don't pick your scabs prematurely. If you want to moisturize them with a little bit of Vaseline, Aquaphor, or, you know, CeraVe healing ointment, go right ahead to put it over your scab, but don't pick them off and also definitely isolate and stay away from others because we wanna contain this outbreak as much as possible. Today's video is not medical advice, but more education around what's going on. Now for dermatologists, we're definitely learning a lot during this time and we're gonna be keeping this in the back of our minds whenever we see a rash that looks like chicken pox, looks like hand foot mouth disease, looks like molluscum contagiosum, which is another virus that's a pox virus that has a volcano look as well. It makes these little pearly umbilicated papules bumps on the skin in kids or adults, mainly kids. They can also mimic monkeypox as well. So we'll be keeping an eye out for that. Please hit the like button. Please share with your friends who are interested in learning more about monkeypox, but please don't panic out there. Please stay safe. Again, hand washing is important and I'll see you guys for the next video. Take care and peace.